what are we doing at Dr. Data? We are based in Paris, uh, precisely in Paris Santé Campus, which is uh, the digital healthcare campus um, launched uh, a year ago by the French government uh, to accelerate e-health uh, in, uh, in the hospitals, by the way, and the information system of, uh, of the government. So we work uh, as a data protection officer with several uh, organizations such as hospitals, healthcare professionals, um, startups in AI, in telemedicine, etc. So uh, we have this uh, this kind of um, view uh, overview uh, between all these uh, uh, stakeholders in the health system, uh, and we are also in, um, in contact with patients because you know, as DPO, if a patient wants to, to withdraw his consent or uh, to, to get access to, to more information about the processing of its own data, uh, he needs to, uh, to, to contact the DPO. So we are in the front of everyone when it comes to processing of health data in primary care and in secondary use of data. So this is why uh, three years ago, uh, we started a project uh, named Isalid, which is now a solution, a patent solution in France, uh, about uh, the information of the patient, how uh, can we uh, educate the patients about uh, the processing of the cell's data, et cetera, and the prof healthcare professional too. Uh, so this project became a, a solution uh, and it's bigger than us now, but uh, there is uh, there are 30 hospitals in, uh, using the solution uh, in France since April this year. So in six months, it's... Uh, uh, a big, a big step for us, and um, the first use of our solution is about uh, the information of the patients uh, on secondary use and to create data warehouses mostly. So, just to give you uh, some some samples, uh, these are a few samples about uh, how we see. Uh, things on this battlefield of health data privacy. Uh, and when it comes to, to have discussions uh, with patients and uh, healthcare professionals. So patients mostly uh, uh, think that their data uh, or their, were my, were, were, or yours, their hospital. Uh, so when I, I first uh, talked with a, a patient in the hospitals, uh, uh, he wanted to, to get access to, to his data it's a, it was about radiology uh, so images medical images of uh, in this medical record uh, and he said something interesting that this medical images are, are mine this data is mine this medical record is mine so uh, i want to have access to everything uh, and i want it now and something like shocked me so because he said, my data is mine, which is legally false, uh, as uh, one has explained. So uh, it was very uh, disturbing uh, to, to me and disturbing to him uh, to, to, to learn that uh, it's not the, the case. And then when we inform patients uh, about, you know, in, in France, we have hospitals, several hospitals building their data warehouses to create AI, to share data with uh, academics, uh, industry, et cetera. So, when you say these words, data warehouses, I mean, I remember a patient told me, uh, are you creating like a, 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 an Amazon of data? Yeah. Okay, it's not an Amazon of data, but you know, these words are, are a little bit scary when you say data warehouses. So the first thing the patient um, has in, uh, in mind, say, it's okay, the hospital is selling my data. Uh, and the hospital is doing partnerships with the industry, with big pharma, etc. So I, I let you imagine uh, how it's complicated in the in the mind of the patient. And then we have some patients, you know, when when the patient is uh, in a hospital or in the medical office of his uh, HCP healthcare professional, he really thinks that data, he, his data is only in the computer of the healthcare professional, you know. Uh, and when you, you, you explain uh, to him that uh, the data is also in the, another information system, you know, because we have a local information system with all the hospitals connected between, uh, between this region and this other region, et cetera, et cetera. It's, he's like, what? Why I am in this information system, by the way? Why it is relevant for me, for my, for my treatment? Uh, so this is the third, 
third thoughts of the patient. And then uh, the patient thinks that only his HEP, healthcare professional, can access to his data, which is not the case. You know, uh, so these thoughts, when you explain that it's not the real case uh, for the patient, you just create fear. You know, so this is the first step. And then when you talk with healthcare professionals, uh, by the way, uh, about the secondary use of data, uh, they said, okay, it's for the own good. It's for the own, the own good of the patient that I'm doing this. Okay, something really, I'm higher than the patient in this, uh, this, uh, this thinking. And it will not change the treatment, you know, by the way, the patient uh, is even, uh, is not informed. So it, it, it changes anything in the treatment. So it's okay. And then we don't need to bother the patient, you know. The patient has a cancer and, you know, it's, it's a problem for me to, to go back to him and inform him that I will use the data for another project, uh, for another data research, etc. So I will not bother him. And then the best one, the patient will not understand. And this is basically creates distance. So we have fear of the patients mostly. And I think uh, with uh, what one has explained a few minutes ago about this data relationship, uh, if the healthcare professionals or the hospitals, etc., the data producers, by the way, uh, took the time to explain some things uh, really clearly to patients, uh, maybe we can switch to from the sphere to education. And this is the first step of this, I think, data relationship. And then if we take the distance, if we take the time to, to build a uh, communication with the patient, uh, to, to create an ethical ecosystem within the hospitals, because you know that uh, there are several patient organizations involved uh, in this uh, primary care and secondary use of data. Uh, in France, we have a specific one, national one, uh, called uh, France Asso Santé, which is a big patient organization involved in this kind of uh, issues. And if we just take the hand of the patient, create this the, the, this communication, they can, we can leave the distance. Uh, I think we need to do this switch. Without that, we cannot press the button of trust. And uh, just one has spoiled me before. <laughs> so uh, this is a big word. Uh, and I think it's not easy to, to get trust, but it's really easy to lose, to lose trust uh, in this kind of virtual relationship. Uh, when now you have telemedicine, and you have several solutions to deal with your, with your, with your care uh, between you and the healthcare professional. So it's something, sometimes it's not human, you know, mostly. Uh, and I think it's important to, to get this education first and then the communication uh, to build this trust. And that's what we, we tried to do uh, in the, the, the past three years with a solution, but a solution based on um, legal and regulatory requirements, uh, workflows uh, within the hospitals, within the medical offices uh, to inform the patient. Because at first, when we we are working with we were working with the hospital, building the data warehouses uh, about I don't know a million of patients. Uh, they, they told us, okay, it's a million of patients. You can imagine it's a lot. I cannot inform them all. Uh, yeah, but you know, uh, uh, we are in the 21st century. We can do really, really, really big things with technology. I mean, there is a guy who wants to 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 fly the a person in the moon. So I can understand how you cannot inform this million of patients. So we tried, we, get, we, we, take, we took the challenge uh, with my technical team to try to build something uh, relevant for the healthcare professional to be easy to use uh, and really relevant also for the patient. So this are some, some numbers from um, the past six months, six, seven months uh, of use of our solution in France. Uh, and you know, there is less than 1% of patients uh, who uh, exercised uh, the right to object, which we call opt-out. Everyone, every patient 
is okay with that. It's okay uh, to 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 leave leave the, the, the healthcare professionals, the hospitals uh, process the data for the, the research for the medicine of tomorrow. Uh, but they want guarantee. They want at least to get the information. I think it's the minimum because, as one has said, it's a piece of uh, of our body. It's a piece of uh, of us, uh, the data. So, so just to give you this number, I think it's important because when we first talked with, um, you know, the researchers, etc., in the hospitals, uh, they were afraid that the patient will opt out massively, uh, and they were like ashamed of uh, giving this information to the patient, like uh, they, they, they were doing something wrong, which is not the case. Uh, you know, uh, it's it really something interesting uh, about that. And I thought to them, you know, it's like marketing. It's not a bad word. You are doing something great. You need to market your product. And the first step is to inform the patient. So it's a legal obligation, but uh, do not see that uh, in that way. See it like you are promoting your, 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 your work because the patient, when he, he comes to a hospital, he even doesn't he doesn't know that the data is is really interesting for the hospital and for the research of tomorrow etc he doesn't know about that he's just giving uh, taking the treatment uh the medical images the biology etc exams and, and that's it so promote your work it's important for tomorrow and what i what i used to say uh is like you know data is individually valuable and collectively powerful because uh, when uh each patients understand uh, that the data is really important to share uh, with the academics and the industry. And when this data producer really understand that behind each line of data, there is an intimacy, there is a patient, there is an individual, maybe we can find solutions. And that's what we are trying to build with our expertise, with our solution, and really a lot of, a lot of work of education uh, because you know GDPR has for four years now, uh, four years I think, yeah, four years, and it's still really complicated to some people here uh, to 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 process. Uh, so it's important to educate and repeat, 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 and uh, make uh, the individual uh, in the center of this ethical ecosystem. Thank you to all.